The film includes chilling incidents where UFOs have not only infiltrated restricted airspace over nuclear missile bases, but on occasion have disabled ICBMs and put the military on high alert. In one dramatic incident from the film, military photographers using telescopic lenses watched a UFO disable a warhead used in a missile test fired from Vandenberg. And flying out over the Pacific, suddenly this domed disc, an object with a dome, came in to frame, circled the warhead, which was flying about eight or 10,000 miles an hour, shot four beams of light at it, whereupon the warhead, the dummy warhead, fell into the Pacific Ocean and the UFO left the facility. UFO Supervisor. Let's pray to God this works. Skynet defense system now activated. Power failure? No. I don't know what it is. Tony, what the hell is going on? that even beams of light were coming down from these UFOs and doing something to the nuclear power plants and keeping them from having a much worse meltdown than the, they did have. Was it simply good fortune that the nuclear accidents at Fukushima and Chernobyl weren't far more deadly? Or is it possible that the UFOs eyewitnesses spotted were responsible for averting these catastrophes? when humans were powerless to do so. Ancient astronaut theorists believe these encounters weren't random occurrences, but part of an extraterrestrial agenda that has been in place on Earth for thousands of years. It appears that there is an ongoing plan in place, a hidden hand in history that is manipulating events that we are interacting with an alien civilization and that we are experiencing the fruits of what they are offering us because our history is being intelligently guided and directed to steer us towards a particular outcome. Dear God, you're saying this country is completely open to attack. Theoretically, we could be under attack already. Who's doing this? Foreign power, some computer hacker in his garage. We can't trace the virus. We can't pin it down. It's like nothing like, we've ever seen before. It keeps growing and changing, and like it has a mind of its own. This can't be happening. Watching Fake News Now at 11. Officially, the uh, U.S. government ended its study of UFOs in 1969 because it assured the public there is no proof the phenomenon represents a threat to national security. But what if these unknown aircraft showed an interest in our nuclear weapons? A group of more than 150 military veterans, missile officers, security personnel, including many who worked at the Nevada test site, say they've seen mystery intruders over nuclear facilities. George Knapp of the I-Team is here with this story. George? Uh, of course, we're not going to jump any conclusions who they <laughs> right. are. <laughs> what, what they're up to. Uh, you know, we don't know who is piloting these craft or why they're poking around, but dozens of witnesses and thousands of pages of documents suggest someone is monitoring our nukes. The Department of Energy admits there's a long history of UFO activity over nuclear weapons facilities elsewhere, but zero cases at the former Nevada test site. Now a new film explores some of the most dramatic episodes that include our backyard. In the darkest days of the Cold War, atomic weapons were routinely exploded above ground at the Nevada test site, the most nuked place on Earth. 
In 1955, 14 A-bombs were detonated as part of Operation Teapot, witnessed by thousands of military personnel in trenches and thousands more test site employees. But there were other observers as well. It was the, uh, what we call the flying saucers. They were pretty prevalent at the test site during those years. At least a dozen former test site employees have told similar stories about unknown aircraft showing up hours or days after an atomic blast. Author and investigator Robert Hastings has spent more than 40 years locating and interviewing military veterans, missile officers, and others who worked in various parts of the atomic weapons program, more than 150 of them so far. They've all told the same story. That, in fact, UFOs have routinely monitored our nuclear weapons going back decades and on occasion apparently have actually interfered with the functionality of those weapons. In addition to the eyewitness accounts, thousands of pages of formerly classified documents have been released to buttress these tales. The I-Team's own FOIA request, filed in 1992, produced a thick stack of documents from the Department of Energy, indicating UFO incidents over every major atomic weapons facility dating to the late 40s, over Los Alamos National Lab, where the bombs were designed, over Hanford, where the plutonium was processed. But DOE has no records of any official sightings over what later became the Nevada test site. Hastings, however, has found plenty. Civilians living near the proving ground often observed the aerial disks, sometimes flying in large formations, and subsequently notified the Air Force. This is a clip from a new documentary film, the culmination of Hastings' years of research. The film includes chilling incidents where UFOs have not only infiltrated restricted airspace over nuclear missile bases, but on occasion have disabled ICBMs and put the military on high alert. In one dramatic incident from the film, military photographers using telescopic lenses watched a UFO disable a warhead used in a missile test fired from Vandenberg. And flying out over the Pacific, suddenly this domed disc, an object with a dome, came in to frame, circled the warhead, which was flying about eight or 10,000 miles an hour, shot four beams of light at it, whereupon the warhead, the dummy warhead, fell into the Pacific Ocean and the UFO left the facility. UFO incidents at the Nevada test site became so routine, according to a former security officer named Walter Levine, that teams were assigned the job of specifically looking for them at a specially equipped building in Indian Springs Air Base, now known as Creech. Levine told Hastings, He said they were all luminous, they were disks in shape, some of them said, he said, were square shaped. We were to pick up a telephone in this little shack. Uh, he said there was no dial tone, a voice would just come on. We would read off all these coordinates, uh, the direction of the object, the altitude, etc. And then he said when we wrote this stuff down on a piece of paper, we were then to burn the paper in a trash can in the shack. The government ended atomic weapons tests years ago, but Nevada incidents continue. Former security officers at Area 2 at Nellis Air Force Base, for years a storage facility for up to 200 nuclear warheads, have reported multiple intrusions by unknown aircraft from the late 90s through 2004. Who's behind these incidents and why? Who knows what their motivation is? Similar incidents have been reported in the UK, India, Pakistan, and other nuclear powers. In the 90s, the I-Team traveled to Russia twice and obtained classified documents from their Ministry of Defense about startling incidents there. On our website, we posted more information, including a link about how you can see Robert Hastings' new film, UFOs and Nukes, The Secret Link Revealed. And I know there's a lot of people who worked at the test site in our audience, in our audience tonight that probably heard these stories, and mm -hmm. give us a call. 150 eyewitnesses, that's... It's one thing to hear somebody yeah tell a story. You see those documents. It happens in 1967 at Malmstrom Air Force Base in Montana. Nick is on his way to meet a key witness to the event. Robert Sala served seven years in the Air Force, rising to the rank of captain. So tell me what happened. March 24, 1967, I and my commander, Fred Mywall, were on duty in Roy, Montana. The men are stationed in the missile launch bunker, 60 feet below ground. We had control of 10 nuclear missiles. 
the Minuteman One. Each missile had an 800 kiloton nuclear weapon. If ordered, it's Salas's job to launch the warheads. I was on alert status. In other words, my commander, Fred, was taking a little nap break. Sometime in the early morning hours, I get a call. Dallas. On the other end of the phone is a terrified guard stationed above the bunker. He's screaming into the phone. He's yelling, sir, I'm looking out the front gate. I see a, this glowing red object. The strange red object is moving like nothing the guards have ever seen before. They were flying very fast uh, across the sky, stopping on a dime, reversing course, making 90 degree angle turns, making no noise. These guys were very, very frightened. It was a critical situation. As fear spreads above ground, things are about to get even more terrifying below. I need you to wake up. I've got the Salas wakes his commander and tells him the guard's report of a UFO above the base. Suddenly, the unthinkable happens. The lights turn from green to red. In other words, red meaning unlaunchable. Everything went red. All 10 missiles were disabled, every single one of them. So what does that mean? It means if we were given the order and if we had to go through our launch procedures, they couldn't be launched. This was an inexplicable situation. With the missiles down, America's nuclear shield is compromised. What was going through your mind when all this was happening? You know, I, I'm thinking we're under some sort of an attack. As Salas and his commander desperately try to get their missiles back online, they learn that a week earlier, another missile launch crew at Malmstrom Base reported seeing the same strange lights. And seconds later, their nuclear warheads also go offline. All 10 of their missiles went down while a UFO was overhead. All 10 of our missiles went down. The UFO was immediately over our facility. What did you think when you found out that this had happened not once, but twice? These were the most sophisticated weapons we had, and so it was worrying that something very unknown, very unusual, very strange could uh, disable them. Is this a coordinated attack by the same unidentified craft? Give us a on each one of them! In both cases, the weapons are out of action for nearly 24 hours. So what did shut down the nuclear missiles at Malmstrom Air Base, and why? This was extraterrestrial in nature. I honestly believe that. My name's Robert Hastings. Thank you for coming. These are men who might know what may have gone on. They're former Air Force missile launch officers, missile base officers, who say UFO spaceships flying saucers make nuclear weapon systems go haywire. In 1966, according to a launch officer, David Schur, his missiles were temporarily activated just as his security guard was reporting a bright object moving from missile to missile to missile. Ten, nine, eight. And it's not just in the United States. Five, also, four, three, in Russia. Two, one. Like a 1982 incident that happened in then Soviet Ukraine. Given the fact that these incidents have gone on over there, including one incident of their missiles being temporarily activated when a UFO was hovering above the missile base, identical to what occurred here, I think we can rule out that who, whoever are piloting these craft are either American or Russian. Japan, March 11, 2011, emanating 43 miles off the eastern coast of the Oshika Peninsula, one of the largest earthquakes in recorded history, a magnitude 9.0, shakes the earth. The massive movement of two tectonic plates instantly moves the entire Japanese mainland some eight feet, ripping down buildings, 
setting fires and killing thousands of people. But the worst is yet to come. The earthquake also triggers enormous tsunamis. Waves as high as 130 feet begin smashing ashore with devastating consequences. One wave in particular struck the Fukushima Daiichi power generating plant and overwhelmed the safety systems, which caused the plant to enter a critical phase and release radioactive material into the atmosphere and into the water. With the nuclear power plant's reactors melting down and radiation seeping into the atmosphere, the authorities evacuate the region. The only people who remain are employees who struggle for days to prevent a larger catastrophe from occurring. But according to eyewitnesses on the scene, these workers were not alone. There were UFO sightings reported in some significant numbers in that area in the weeks and the days leading up to the earthquake and tsunami. And there were a number of UFO sightings reported in the immediate area uh, directly afterward. And this suggests the possibility that extraterrestrials were involved in stabilizing that situation. Because had that Fukushima plant melted down, it would have made a large swath of Asia uninhabitable for a very long time. Could extraterrestrials really have been present at the Fukushima meltdown? And might they have helped to prevent it from being an even more catastrophic disaster? A number of witnesses reported that there were UFOs hovering around the power station. And that even beams of light were coming down from these UFOs and doing something to the nuclear power plants and keeping them from having a much worse meltdown than the, they did have. Was it simply good fortune that the nuclear accidents at Fukushima and Chernobyl weren't far more deadly? Or is it possible that the UFOs eyewitnesses spotted were responsible for averting these catastrophes when humans were powerless to do so? Ancient astronaut theorists believe these encounters weren't random occurrences, but part of an extraterrestrial agenda that has been in place on Earth for thousands of years. It appears that there is an ongoing plan in place, a hidden hand in history that is manipulating events that we are interacting with an alien civilization and that we are experiencing the fruits of what they are offering us because our history is being intelligently guided and directed to steer us towards a particular outcome. Virus is infected. Skynet. Skynet is the virus. It's the reason everything's falling apart. Skynet has become self-aware. In one hour, it will initiate a massive nuclear attack on its enemy. What enemy? Us. Humans. <laughs>